A lot of me Wi-Fi routers, which is Mantech processors, are supported by OpenWRT. OpenWRT is an open source operating system which gives us full access to the routers. If you don't know what is uh, OpenWRT, you definitely should try it out. We can directly burn the OpenWRT operating system into the board by Serial Console or log into the stock firmware and use the MTD utility to write OpenWRT into the board. Personally, I choose the second way to avoid opening the router's case. The stock firmwares are based on OpenWRT. Just a lot of modifications are made by the manufacturer, which makes it harder for us to control the router. So we can log in most of the devices by either SSH or Telnet. There is no general guidance on how to get the SSH or Telnet access. Each model has its own way. For some devices, we can request SSH access from a manufacturer. For some other devices, we can unlock SSH by sending specific data to the device. Or just to take advantage of some vulnerabilities to unlock login access. After getting into the stock firmware, we are definitely able to do something. But uh, flashing the real OpenWRT image would give us more freedom. Each Wi-Fi router has a flash chip. The flash chip stores all the files of the operating system. When installing firmware, we write the image into the flash. Each time we start the router, the operating system will be loaded into memory from flash. After that, we do all the reads and write in the memory. The memory is also known as RAM. The memory is fast, but it only works when the power is on. If the device loses power, then all the data in memory will be gone. At this time, if we put the power back on, the router will load data into memory again from flash storage. Sometimes we need to do some configurations of the Wi-Fi router. We store the configuration data into NVRAM. For me, Wi-Fi routers, the NVRAM is a small part of the flash storage. This is quite different from Cisco devices. But all in all, NVRAM would keep your settings no matter power is on or off. These are just some basic knowledges. Next up, we mostly talk about the flash chip, since it's where the operating system should be installed in. There are several partitions on the flash drive. The first partition usually is the bootloader partition. After the bootloader comes the firmware partition. There might also be some other partitions, such as the boot config partition, which are differed by devices. When the router is powered on, the bootloader will do some basic checks, load some configurations, then it starts the firmware to run. The firmware is the Linux operating system. There are different uh, Linux distributions like OpenWRT, and uh, Merlin, which are famous. The operating system contains a kernel and uh, file systems. After the firmware is started, the kernel will first be loaded into memory. The Linux kernel will utilize the hardware with proper drivers. Then the system will be mounted. The device is fully started until we can log in. So do you get the point? When installing OpenWRT, we just replace the files or the firmware partition. No need to touch the bootloader. That is the common situation. Devices which have regular partitions are just like this, such as Mi Wi-Fi Mini and Mi Wi-Fi Nano. But some later devices have a more complicated partition table, like Mi 3 and Mi 4. The firmware partition has two kernels. Its bootloader does not directly trigger to boot the firmware partition. Instead, the bootloader triggers either kernel 0 or kernel 1 to boot. So when installing OpenWRT, we first force it to boot from kernel 1 by setting up the configuration, then individually write OpenWRT kernel into the kernel 1 partition, write OpenWRT root file system into the root FS0 partition. The bootloader will start OpenWRT kernel from uh, kernel 1 partition, then mount root file system. Although kernel 0 and uh, some other partitions have not changed, we will no longer boot from uh, kernel 0, so it doesn't matter at all.
OK, that is the firmware part where the OpenWRT operating system should be installed in. Don't forget in front of the firmware there is a bootloader. Usually we don't touch it, but there are different bootloaders in the world. Some ones are better than the stock bootloader. You can definitely try it out. The stock bootloaders often have a factory recovery function other than basic loading functions, so that if the operating system does not boot up, we can start the recovery function to reinstall the stock firmware from either USB drive or TFTP. But uh, I cannot say every bootloader is so good. As far as I know, the bootloader or Mi3 doesn't provide the recovery function. You've got to do a search to know if your device's bootloader is good enough to provide the recovery function. To start the recovery function, you just uh, keep pressing on the reset button, then plug the power on. When you see the orange LED starts blinking, you are in the recovery mode. At this moment, some uh, models would search for the stock firmware from a uh, USB drive like a Mi Wi-Fi Mini. Some models would scan for available firmware from a uh, TFTP like Mi 4 and the uh, Redmi IC2100. Different devices, different ways. Again, you need to do a research before using the recovery function. Another important uh, partition needs to be mentioned is the factory partition. The factory partition uh, is actually NVRAM for the device. It stores some important parameters. If the partition is erased, then the device won't function properly. Okay, my story has been long enough for you to get sleepy. Installing OpenWRT is somehow complex and uh, difficult to remember every step. This video is a note. In the future, if I forget something, I will come back and uh, watch this video again. Hope it also helps you a bit.